Hello everyone and welcome to a brand new Disney in Detail travel day vlog and a brand new series. And I'm traveling solo this time, which I haven't done for a little while now. I think all of this year, yes, all of my trips this year, I've had a travel buddy. So this is my first solo trip for a little while now. And I do love a solo trip. I know a lot of you guys enjoy seeing that kind of different perspective of traveling to Disney World on your own. However, there will be a returning character in these vlogs because Kate is actually out in Orlando at the moment. She flew yesterday. She's there with her boyfriend. It's her birthday as well while we're out there. So I will be catching up with them and seeing them. So for all of you Kate fans out there, you will be getting to see her. She'll be popping up in these vlogs. And it has been a while since you've seen Kate. It must be January, February, 2022 it's been a while since she's been so she's very excited to be back out in Disney and uh, she will definitely be saying hi in these vlogs so if you're not already subscribed be sure to subscribe and tap the bell icon and then you're always notified when I upload a Disney vlog every Saturday but I'm very excited to get going I'm here at Gatwick Travel Lodge this time the Gatwick hotels have been so expensive since the pandemic compared to Heathrow so normally I would stay in the Premier Inn right at the terminal but it was just so expensive this time for my accommodation this trip I'm actually going to be staying again at Endless Summer over at Universal. I'm actually not doing the Universal Parks on this trip but the price was so good for the hotel I just had to go with it. I loved that hotel, they've got Starbucks in the lobby, the food court was really good, the rooms were very comfortable and nice and big so I just went with that and I will take Ubers to and fro from Disney although I do have one night at Saratoga Springs which is the night I'm doing Mickey's Not So Scary Halloween Party. It's that time of year now where the Halloween season is happening, it's also food and wine festival i'm going to be going to kennedy space center i've got lots of different restaurants i've never shown in the vlogs before that i'm going to be doing so lots of new things coming your way in this vlog series i've just had some breakfast i'm about to jump in an uber across to south terminal because this one is not within walking distance you do need to get the little hopper bus that they have or an uber and um, the bus you do have to pay for so i tend to just get an uber anyway and then i can just get straight over to the terminal to drop my bag off i've already checked in and I managed to get myself an aisle seat which is really good I need an aisle because I need to be able to get up I'm one of those people who is up and down a lot and I don't want to annoy anybody who would be sat on the aisle so I always try and get an aisle seat and it does look like the flight is very very busy I had an email with them asking if people can check their hand luggage I actually only have a small bag as hand luggage but it's obviously a busy flight today and because I'm flying with British Airways I will be arriving into the brand new terminal again at MCO which is the C terminal I went to that one when I flew in February this year with Catherine so I'll get to land in that terminal again some people have reported their bags taking a long time and things like that so I will of course let you know how all of that goes how long things take how long immigration takes and everything um because I had a very quick experience the last couple of times I've been there on the press trip and when I was with mum and that's at the old terminal the A and B terminal at Orlando um it was very quick so we'll see what the difference is when we land at sea so I'm just gonna go and get this uber now and let's go get rid of my bags just to show you the travel lodge room here obviously I have slept in the bed so it's not perfectly made but they are very basic rooms they're fine I would not say they're as good as premier inn premier inn is you know fairly basic in a way but travel lodge I would say is even more basic but it's been absolutely fine they do have a little place here to make tea and coffee and you can see behind they do have a restaurant here so they do breakfast and dinner they also have a bar it's really not that bad I'm probably not selling it it's definitely a cheaper option so it is a little bit further from the terminal like I say from Premier Inn where you can just walk across this one you do have to get a little bus or an uber but if you're looking to save money and you're looking to do things on a budget which I often am with the amount of times that I do travel I have to keep costs down then this was a good option for me this time okay scratch what I just said because I just came down to the lobby to get an uber and it's gonna be 23 pounds to get an uber and the bus is four pounds fifty and will be here in about five minutes apparently so 100% I'm getting the bus and if you stay at this hotel I would plan to unless there's like several of you then it might be worth getting an uber but when it's just me um that's crazy to pay that much when I could just get the bus for £4.50.
Oh my goodness, it looks busy here, what on earth? And down at the end here is where the British Airways backdrop and check-in is. It's where Virgin used to be. So I'm not sure how to explain what I just experienced. Um, it took me two hours and 30 minutes to drop my bag. I was already checked in, the BA systems were down apparently, and I got in the queue at 11, and I've just now got out of the queue, and it is 1.30. My flight is supposed to be start boarding at 1.30, and I'm not even through security. Two and a half hours to drop my bag when I was already checked in. It is completely crazy. Anyway, let's go through security now, and hopefully I get to the gate on time. Okay, I am through, and luckily security was so quiet, I breezed through in minutes. So although it's two and a half hours to drop my bag, security was nothing, so I now just about have time to grab a bottle of water and a sandwich and get to the gate. I'm gonna have to go straight to the gate. So this is why I always say leave loads of time at the airport because unexpected things can happen. Obviously this was very unexpected and very unusual. I've never ever waited that long before. I think it was just like a really weird thing that happened with their system, but it can happen. So never leave yourself short of time because even though I've left enough time, I was here three hours before, I am now still in a massive hurry. <laughs> duty free you will have to wait for today I'm afraid I am breezing past everything no time to browse oh I think this may be my most hurried airport experience ever having stood there for two and a half hours and now the rush to get to the gate this is so crazy I just about managed to grab some snacks they had no sandwiches so I just had to grab what I could absolutely crazy crazy travel day so far As you will have seen there, me coming through the new terminal. I'm just about to get myself an Uber and I thought while things were fresh in my mind, I would just quickly let you know the kind of timings about how long everything took. I'll let you know about the flight later when I get to the hotel. Uh, so I should have mentioned back at Gatwick, but there was all the chaos going on. The bus from my hotel at um, Travel Lodge over to the terminal was like 10 minutes, so that was easy. Then when I've just arrived here, it took 25 minutes to get my luggage. So when I arrived at the carousel, it was like 25 minutes until my bag came off and then going through passport control was literally five minutes there was barely anyone there that was a total breeze and a lot of people have mentioned with this new terminal that they feel like everything took longer in the experiences that I've had so far I find that the luggage takes longer at this terminal but passport control is quicker so overall I would say it's exactly the same either way you're either gonna wait for your bags or you're gonna wait for passport control announcement personally I prefer waiting a little bit longer for my luggage than waiting longer in the passport queue I really don't like waiting in the passport queue. So overall, I prefer coming into this terminal in Orlando. However, only BA come into this terminal. If you're flying with Virgin Atlantic, it will still be the older terminals, A and B. Just thought I'd let you know about that experience. Like I said, I'll let you know all about the flight when I get there. I'm gonna get myself an Uber now across to Saratoga Springs to grab the owner's locker, and then I'm going to get straight in an Uber across to my hotel at Endless Summer Dockside. And I met lots of you on the flight, so hello to everybody that I met. There were so many of you guys on the flight and lots of you were actually staying over endless summer either surfside or dockside So I may have seen you guys again after the plane at the hotel But yeah, let's go and get this uber now and when you're getting an uber from this terminal You just walk straight through here I've just come through passport control You have a Starbucks there on the left and your uber will literally pick you up at the curbside there So it's very very easy and you can see it says right above the doors there Rideshare so you just walk straight through here 
I'm just waiting inside in the air conditioning for my Uber because if I go and stand outside, it's quite warm out there. It is very hot at this time of year in Orlando, as a lot of you will know. The Uber, I will say as well, it was super expensive. It's like $50, which when you're on your own is crazy. It's not normally that expensive. Sometimes they do have surge pricing. That is just one thing to bear in mind. If there's several of you, it's not too bad if you're like splitting $50, but one person on your own, that is quite expensive. But never mind, it is what it is. And I've just realized that I may not have shared the owner's locker story in these vlogs. I think I talked about it over on my other channel. Basically, the hotel that I'm staying in, the Universal Hotels, which are all Lowe's hotels, don't accept owner's lockers at their bell services. They won't let them drop off. So basically, I'm having to go to Saratoga Springs where Kate is staying and pick up my owner's locker there. So she's obviously got a reservation. So I'm having it delivered there. I need to go and get it in an Uber and then Uber across to Universal. I'm here at Saratoga Springs. The owner's locker is secured and I'm just gonna jump in the Uber now. Kind of a crazy way around that I had to do things, but there we go, I have it. to get this luggage cart to bring the owner's locker up and I'm going to take it straight back down because they do need them for other guests to use. Also Starbucks closes in 15 minutes so hopefully I can grab a coffee, get something from Uber Eats because I'm really hungry now and it's like 10pm or something and then I will come back up and I will be back with you. So I'm down in the lobby now, I just about made it to grab my coffee, thank goodness, I feel like I really need it. Coffee doesn't keep me awake at night but when I'm flagging like I am now I just needed a little pick me up and I've just ordered some food on Uber Eats because um, I think the food court here is closed or it's about to, I don't know. I just went onto Uber Eats and um, ordered it by whatever is the quickest, which happens to be KFC, so that is what I'm having. <laughs> so I'm just sitting here waiting for it. I feel like today has been such a chaotic travel day. Normally when I'm at the airport, I get to kind of show a little bit of what I'm doing, just take a look around. There wasn't any of that. I was lucky I had time after that mad queue to just go to the toilets when I got out and then run to the gate. I literally had time to like run into Boots on the way to the gate, grab some water. They didn't have any sandwiches or anything, but it actually ended up being fine. I had um, the tray on the plane, which you will have seen the clips of. Um, so I had like the cheese and the crackers and stuff like that. And I just had a couple of snacks, but I am really hungry now because I haven't eaten properly since my breakfast this morning so it's just been a mad crazy day and then the mad dash to get the owner's locker which was such a weird thing to have to do but there we go I've got it now it's up in the room I was a little bit worried about getting it up to the room I didn't know what their situation was here with bell services but as it was I could just borrow a luggage cart and just take it myself so that was nice and easy and I feel relaxed now I'm here I'm gonna grab my food when it arrives, take it upstairs, and then I'll do a debrief for you guys on the flight, the day in general. Tomorrow I'm gonna be going to Epcot, and this vlog is gonna roll right into tomorrow, and I'm very excited to go to my favorite park. Normally I do Magic Kingdom first, but I just felt like changing it up and doing Epcot first this time, so it's all gonna be one big vlog, but I'll just wait for this food. It says it's gonna be about 15 minutes, and uh, yeah, then I will see you back up in the room, and I'll show you, of course, what the room looks like as well. So as you come in on the right-hand side, there is a mirror here, a full length, big mirror and it has these handy little hooks on the edges as well so you can put like bags or ears or jackets or whatever on there and then around here you have the bathroom area so there's the sink towels and stuff there and a light up mirror and there's a hair dryer on the wall a lot of people always ask about hair dryers then just round to the right hand side there you've got the bathroom and from there just round to the left there's this little kind of wardrobe area I've already started putting a lot of my stuff away so you can see it all there. Space for shoes at the bottom, there's a little luggage rack and a safe there. And then coming into the main part of the room, excuse all of my stuff, I've already started putting things everywhere. This is one of the good things about these rooms at Endless Summer, they are just so big. So let me just show you how tall the ceilings are. It's really hard to tell from the camera. So these rooms do feel really big compared to the all-star rooms over at Disney World. You have two beds here and just like a little 
kind of bedside thing, but it looks like a little trunk. Then you have your TV and there's a chair over there in the corner and then just a little stool to kind of sit there and some drawers. And then in here is the refrigerator. And they do have a coffee maker in the rooms here as well. Okay, it's definitely time for bed now. I've just had my food, it was nothing special. Like I said, it was just KFC. It took ages to arrive. Having picked the thing that was gonna be the quickest, there was then a problem with the delivery. Just the theme of the day today, but it was fine. And um, I've just done a little bit of unpacking, got some of my stuff put away, not everything. I haven't opened the owner's locker or anything. I'm just feeling super tired now. And I think it's like 11.30, something like that so I'm definitely going to head to bed before I do that I just wanted to mention about the flight because I never really show much on the flight particularly if I'm on my own because there just isn't really anything to say I'm normally sat next to strangers um, when I'm with someone that I know sometimes we chat a little bit throughout the flight but when it's just me um, there's really nothing to report I'm just sat there listening to music watching films eating snacks drinking drinks and that's pretty much it there's nothing really to say I did show you those few brief clips I just wanted to talk about um, the in-flight entertainment because that's one thing I have to say is way way better with BA than it is with Virgin. It is the in-flight entertainment options. They have so many films with BA. They had, um, I showed the sections, they had like a 90s, 80s, a 2000s section, like a favorite section of like classics. Then they had new stuff. They had the new Little Mermaid film, which I watched. There was honestly like 20 different films that I would have watched. Whereas last couple of times I've flown with Virgin, I struggled to really find anything. I just didn't love the selection of films that they had. The flight felt very quick today. It's always the same roughly the same amount of time but sometimes it feels like it goes really really long but today it was actually very quick because I did watch several films and it just really passed the time and like I said earlier I met so many of you guys on the plane I've met several of you here at the hotel as well a lot of you guys are staying here at this hotel and um, like different people I've met since I've been here so I've met so many of you already and I've just got here which is incredible and I just want to say a big shout out to Kimberly as well who is cabin crew with BA she is a subscriber and uh, she looked after me throughout the flight and I just want to say hi as well to your friend Chelsea and to your mum they both watched the vlogs as well so hi to all of you guys but just thank you so much to everybody for always being so nice always coming and saying hello I just love having a chat with you guys so please do always come and say hello if you see me um, on the plane or in the airport or in the parks or anywhere like I said tomorrow I am off to Epcot I'm really excited to spend some time in my favorite park no major plans for tomorrow I am eating at Via Napoli though which is one of my favorite restaurants in Epcot I love Via Napoli I'm not 100% sure whether Kate um, and her boyfriend might join me for that one I'm not sure that was discussed at one point but we're just kind of going with it and um, I will meet up with Kate at some point so she will definitely be appearing in these vlogs like I mentioned so I know a lot of you will be keen to see Kate because she's not been in them for a while so I'm gonna wrap this up now I'm gonna head to bed this is gonna roll right into tomorrow so I will see you guys in the morning good morning everyone and as you can tell from the outfit it is Disney time I'm all ready to go I had a good sleep last night I probably got like six hours or something so not loads because you always do wake up reasonably early but that's fine I'm gonna do my day in Epcot today I'm gonna come back right after my dinner I'm eating at Via Napoli this evening and then I'll be able to get a relatively early night to then be ready again for another day at Disney tomorrow and the other plans for today I am just going to be wandering around Epcot probably ride Spaceship Earth possibly Guardians if I can get into the virtual line at 1 p.m. I'll see how that goes and today there is also a virtual reveal of Disney Cruise Line's newest ship the Disney Treasure it was supposed to be last week but it got moved to this week so I'll probably take the opportunity to grab a Starbucks and take a break while that is happening so I can watch it and let you guys know what I've seen what's happening it's going to be over on the Disney Parks blog so it'll be up by the time you're watching this you can go and check that out and it'll be on my stories as well I'm going to put some info up on there just very excited for the day so I'm going to head downstairs now and get an Uber I'll probably wait to get coffee or maybe not maybe I need my coffee first I'll see how I feel when I get downstairs and just to show you my outfit of the day today I have these ears on which were from Disney I would say at least a year ago if not more probably 18 months ago and they're kind of that faux leather look with these little pearls on which is really cute and I've also just got this little pearl headband as well I just liked that in front of the ears 
just as the overall look. And this dress is one of my absolute favorites. This is from Pour Moi. I have this in several colors. It's my favorite park dress. I quite often travel wearing this as well. It is super comfortable. I've got it in red and in blue as well, but it's just a really nice length. It's not too long or too short. And then I've just got that on with my Adidas trainers. But yeah, this dress is so comfortable for the parks. I honestly wear it so often. I will link it below if it's still available. I think they still have it. Okay, no time for coffee this morning. I've just got my Uber and it's one minute away. dropped off and they have moved the uber drop off area so it says here park entrance it's really not that far i was worried it was going to be really far away or something but it's not it is a little bit further than it used to be but you just basically walk along this long pathway and that will take you over to security so that's really not that bad and i do believe there might be a five minute wait for spaceship earth if that's the case i'm going straight on it oh this is just so perfect walking in this amazing weather my favorite epcot music i did bleep going through security but i held my umbrella out that's always a good trick then you go straight through they don't have to check your bag. I'm good, how are you? Nice to meet you. Hey, you're not supposed to be in New York. Thank you. Oh, it feels so good to be back. Walking into your first park of the trip is incredible, especially when it is your favourite park. Okay, let's see what wait time we have. If it has gone up too much, I will do it later, but let's just see. Oh, five minutes. I can already smell the smell coming out through the door. This is one of my I am here at Disney attractions. It's just the smell of it. It's the nostalgia. I love it so much. Stop Spaceship Earth to start the day, that is amazing. And I'm right here by Connections Cafe. So I'm gonna run in, get myself a coffee and uh, maybe some breakfast as well. And then I'm going to watch the live stream for the Disney Treasure cruise ship. So I'm gonna do that and then head off around the World Showcase. And like I pointed out when I was here back in June, there is a lot more greenery going on in this new area, which is still behind construction walls. I can't wait to see this whole area when it's done. I have secured my coffee and also I have got a cronut. So the cronut has been around in Epcot for a long time. It keeps changing location where you can get it from and it seems that Starbucks is the new home Let me just see if I can get this open I wanted to get it just to compare it to previous ones I've had because like I say they had it in the world showcase for ages Then it was in one of the booths at the big flower and garden festival and it had some kind of purple um, Icing stuff on top and now they have it here and it's just in its regular format So let's give this a try and for those of you completely in the dark about what a cronut is It's basically a croissant donut. So it's a donut up, but it has layers like a croissant and then it has cinnamon sugar this one is not as like layery as previous ones I've had I've had ones before where you could really see like all of the layers this one is kind of not so much but it smells amazing so let's see that tastes so good oh my gosh it's ages since I've had a cronut that is really really nice I can highly recommend that so now I'm gonna sit here and watch this reveal of the Disney treasure because it's just about to start so I'll let you guys know how that goes just outside Connections Cafe now and I just wanted to let you guys know while it's all fresh in my mind the reveal that I just watched of the new Disney Cruise Line cruise ship the Disney Treasure I put it on my stories as well and it looks incredible it's very adventure themed and it's beautiful as all of the Disney cruise ships are they are all so luxurious and this one is no exception but it has that adventure theme and they had dining areas themed to um, Zootopia they had 20,000 Leagues Under the Sea Jungle Cruise they had a Marvel dining area which looked absolutely incredible they showed lots about the shows that are going to be on the ship there's a brand new show that they're going to have and they are Broadway style shows like absolutely incredible and 
described all of the state rooms look beautiful they have kind of regular rooms and then they showed the suites that they have i would love to do a cruise on that ship honestly i cannot wait to see more when it actually sets sail which is going to be december 2024 so there's a little while to go yet but they just wanted to obviously reveal everything and show what it's going to be like i'll put a link in the description of this video to that reveal video so you guys can see it for yourself you really need to see it for yourself to see how amazing it is and now i think i'm going to head into creation shop there's a pair of ears I just want to have a look for. No, I don't need any more ears, obviously. Um, but I haven't bought any for a while, I don't think. I did get the churro ears actually in June, but I'm gonna go and have a look for these ears and I will obviously show you guys what is new as well if I see anything. And then I'm gonna set off around the World Showcase, probably starting in Mexico. It feels wrong to me to go the other way around and probably do the Grand Fiesta tour, of course. And just work my way around and this evening, like I said earlier, I'm gonna be eating at Via Napoli with Kate, so I'm really excited for that. Okay, we're in and it's really not very busy in here, which is nice. This is a very good level of busyness for browsing. Oh, and they have a new tumbler here with Epcot on. It's kind of got that iridescent look. And that is a Starbucks one, $39.99. Some of them are even more pricey than that. That's actually quite nice. Okay, I've seen something I like. This hoodie has a zip down the front, which is my ideal kind of hoodie, just to kind of wear at home in the winter. And then it's got Walt on one sleeve, kind of like a spirit jersey, and then Disney, and then World on the other sleeve there. And if you remember when I was here in June, I bought one of these Starbucks tumblers at a very reduced price. They were obviously making room, getting rid of the ones that were themed to the 50th to make way for these new ones. So they have this silver one, which is $49.99, and they still have lots of the Disney 100 merch. And I know there's a lot of Stitch fans out there, so you guys would love this lounge fly. How much is that one? $88. And this one is very beautiful. I love that. That one is $78. So the price is very quite a bit because this one is $10 more than this one. I actually like this one better. And the Halloween merch is out. They have this spirit jersey. I do like the um, Walt Disney World with the kind of ombre on the back, but I don't think this would be my kind of thing, but it's very, very orange for Halloween. And they have these furry ears. Just move it because of the light. There we go. They're very fluffy. And they have the matching lounge fly. I would imagine that one would be a little more expensive. $88. They also have this lounge fly. I like this one a lot better. It's kind of an iridescent orange with the black sequin. That is very nice. This one's bound to be more expensive. Uh, oh no, 88. Okay, that's crazy. I would have thought that would be more. My iridescent one, which I had at the beginning of the 50th celebrations, which is very, very similar to this. I'm sure that one was 110. It was like crazy expensive. I remember I got a good annual pass discount, but yeah, that's actually for this style with the ears and the bow and everything. 88 is not too bad. And they also have this spirit jersey, Don't Lose Your Head, with Billy Butcherson. This is a Sanderson Sisters spirit jersey. And on the back it says, be your own kind of magic. And they also have these ears. These are really different. These would actually be perfect with a new dress that I've just got. I'm kind of tempted by those. And they do have these Halloween ears. I love these. These are very cool. They're $34.99. They do have Halloween ears every year, but I really like those. And they also have the Food and Wine Festival merchandise in here. I guess this is, hmm. I would say this is a little tray for you to have your food and wine items because you put the stem of your wine glass in that hole and then you put whatever you're eating on here. I think that's what this is. I may have that totally wrong and this could be like a little cutting board type thing. I don't know, I'm pretty sure that's what it is though. And they have this food and wine festival Encanto magic band. That's really nice. Although it is $64.99, say it with me, kind of pricey. And they also have a food and wine festival spirit jersey. It's got Mickey on the bottom there. Oh, it has a zip. So it's a spirit jersey, but it is literally like a spirit jersey with a zip down the front. Have I manifested spirit jerseys and everything having a zip down the middle? Please can we have more of these? A plain black one like this would make me very, very happy. And they do have a annual pass holder shirt there with figment on, which is, um, I think food and wine, yeah, food and wine branded on the back. This Muppets shirt, I haven't seen this one before. Beaker, he's my favorite, I love this. Although, you can't really see in this lighting, it is like a dark, like a bottle green color. And it just reminds me of my old school uniform. I used to wear school uniform that was bottle green. So it's really just not my favorite color, but I do love the Muppets on there. And they do still have this lounge fly bag, which I absolutely love. 
I'm not going to get this. I could have got it at 30% off. If I was going to get it, I would have bought it then. But I do absolutely love it. I just don't need another one. It's very beautiful though. And I think these are new too since I was last here. They're really nice. I love this and this kind of effect around the edge. And I think these ones with the autumn leaves might be new too. Is it just me or do they look a bit squashed at the top? I don't know if I'm just imagining that. And I think these are also new. I haven't seen those before. They remind me of what would be like Valentine ears. I keep coming back to these ones, which are not actually the ones I was looking for or that I had in mind, but I do really love them and they are perfect for the dress that I'm thinking of. I think I'm gonna get these ones. I am just loving wandering in this weather and I have met so many of you guys today. Honestly, everyone is here in Epcot. So thank you to everyone who has come up and said hi so far. I'm not really sure if I need to eat something because obviously I had my Krona, that was a while ago now, and I have my dinner at Via Napoli, which I need to be hungry for. So maybe I'll just check out a little food and wine festival snack at some point. I'm planning on showing you guys what they have anyway. So as I go around, if I see something and it's not too close to dinner, then I might grab it. Oh, Pluto's off. He's been doing a meet and greet. He is walking with purpose. Okay, so here we have the noodle exchange. And this is the menu. They have a beef ramen with mushrooms and radish. Then they have an impossible pork udon, Thai shrimp. And then they also have a vegetarian ramen at the bottom there as well with tofu. Always my favorite pavilion. So let's get in. The smell of the Grand Fiesta tour hits you as soon as you're walking through the doors. And also does the inability to see because me and Catherine discovered if you've walked in from the bright sunshine, it is then totally dark in here and you can barely see where you're going. It's fine as soon as your eyes adjust though. I just love this pavilion. Look at this. It's so nice and cool in here as well. This is the perfect place to come if you do happen to be at Disney World during a very hot period of time. The Mexico Pavilion is always just a welcome place to stop. And the fountain has water again. I have a feeling last time I was here, this was dry. I don't know if I've totally just made that up, but I'm pretty sure it was. So I just took a brief break there to put up some stories on my Instagram. And now I think it's time for the Grand Fiesta Tour. I love this boat ride, it's so relaxing. And it looks like it's a quiet day for the Grand Fiesta Tour. We always like to go in the same place at the back on this ride. <laughs> Lovely, that is always a relaxing moment on um, the Grand Fiesta Tour. Let's take a little look at the merchandise. I always love looking at these. And each time I'm here, I choose a favourite, which can be different each time. Sometimes they have different ones as well. I am going to say this time, I think this one, actually. She's got the best hat. Okay, moving on round to Norway now, and um, conveniently, it is restroom time, and these are my favorite restrooms in all of the World Showcase. And for those who like this level of detail, I know you do, my least favorite are the ones in Morocco. <laughs> Just as you come out of the Mexico Pavilion on the left is where you can find Donald doing his meet and greet. And these guys are amazing if you ever get a chance to see them. They have been performing here at Epcot since the very beginning, since opening day, and they are just amazing. So usually one of my favorite places to stop and eat something would be the bakery in Norway, but actually I don't want something sweet today. I'm in the market for a savory snack if I'm gonna eat anything, so I'm gonna carry on looking at the food and wine festival booths for that. And here in China, we have pan fried chicken dumplings, crispy duck bao bun, bao bun? How do you say that? Bao, bao bun and dan dan noodles which is spicy pork with szechuan sauce peanut butter and sesame so i'm not feeling any of that so i'm going to keep going i always try and do the film in china at least once every trip but i think i'll do that my next trip to epcot i'm going to be back later in the trip so i'm just contemplating what drink to get i almost got something from joy of tea they had some cocktails there i almost got a kung fu punch for old time's sake if you guys remember that vlog from way back 2016 i think and uh, i do love a kung fu punch but i'm thinking maybe a schofferhofer might be in order i'm heading around now to germany and we're just passing another booth here kenya and they have kenyan coffee barbecued beef that is not my type of thing but that does sound quite nice i can imagine that would be very popular and peri peri skewered shrimp actually here it is with a picture just so you guys can see what it actually looks like this apron is so cute 
I was more into cooking, I would consider getting that. I love that. And here we have the Alps booth. This one always smells quite interesting. It's where they have the raclette Swiss cheese. Um, so the melty cheese, and then you have various different options there. But I do really want to try the dark chocolate fondue. That's one of the things that was on my list, but I'm not going to get that right now, because again, that's more of a dessert thing. And they also have the Germany booth. I'm going to have a go at this. Schinken noodle? Schinken noodle. I don't know, I think that is very wrong, but that is basically pasta, gratin with ham, onions and cheese. They have bratwurst on a pretzel roll and apple strudel. That apple strudel looks really good. I'm so drawn to all the dessert things and weirdly I am not as much of a sweet person as a savoury person. I normally prefer savoury food, but everything I've seen so far, it's all dessert based that I would eat. But that thing at the top actually does look quite good. And of course we need to check out the Werther's store. I love it in here. Looks a little bit less busy than normal. This is where you can come to get the Werther's popcorn, which is so delicious. It's really, really nice. Oh, the smell in here, honestly, even if you don't want to buy anything, I'm not buying anything right now, but you have to come in here just for the smell alone. And if you are a Werther's fan, you can get yourself some blissful caramel Werther's sauce. I bet that would be so good on ice cream. Oh, this is caramel that you dip apples in. That sounds like a dream. That kind of sounds like um, Biscoff spread, but Werther's version. And at some point this trip, I do want to try the um, butter bar, but they have a strawberry version now, which is new. So I'll try that next time. And here is the pickle tree. I love the pickle decorations with the little Santa hat on. And every time I forget the story with the pickle ornament, here we go. According to German tradition, the pickle brings good luck and was the last ornament placed on the tree. On Christmas morning, the first child to find the gherkin was rewarded with an extra little gift by St. Nicholas. This tradition encouraged the children to appreciate all the ornaments on the tree rather than hurrying to see what St. Nicholas had left for them. Okay, cool. That's really good to know the actual history behind the gherkin because I wasn't entirely certain. So this would actually be quite a neat souvenir. You could buy this and it always be the last ornament that you put on your Christmas tree. Becky and I really enjoyed our trip to Germany this year. We went to Munich to see the D100 Disney exhibition. So I will link that vlog just in case you're interested in watching that. And the stores here kind of go on and on and there is a little bar back here as well. Okay, so this place is called the Wine Keller, this little bar back here. And I've got my shop offer from here. I think this might be a little bit smaller because it was in a bottle rather than on draft. But that's actually good for me because the other one is always a bit too much when it's just me. So I'm gonna stand in here and drink this in the cool air. So from now on, I will always get my shop offer from here rather than outside. And it's so good. Mum loved this while she was here as well. It's one of my favourite drinks in the world. Okay, disaster has struck the first one of the trip. I was just having my drink here and my pop socket broke. I don't know how that happened. The phone, I was just talking to my mum real quick and then the phone froze and then this broke off literally right afterwards. Obviously those two things are totally unrelated. But this is actually broken. So now I'm in the market for a new one apparently. Obviously I need to just pop in and see if we have any new furry friends in here. My gosh, I love this top. This is so nice. I really like the sleeves and it has a v-neck too. Oh, here it is down here. How much is it? Don't want to mess up this perfectly folded display. Oh, somebody's already ruined this one. I'm just trying to see how much it is. Oh, and it says the Germany Pavilion Epcot World Showcase. Aha. 39.99. I would get my discount on that. I do really like it. I'm gonna think about it, but that is a strong contender for a purchase that I might make. I think the unicorn is new. I don't remember that one from last time. Or this little cat, actually. I don't remember if we saw the giraffe last time. I think the donkey is one of my favorites, and of course the monkey, because I just love monkeys. Oh, they also have a tiny unicorn. I think I prefer this little one. That's very cute. And this is what they have here at the Spain booth. Charcuterie, charcuterie, how on earth? I can't pronounce anything, honestly, I'm terrible. Basically, meat and cheese in a cup, paella, and they have a seafood salad as well. None of that is gonna be for me. Depending if I see anything in the next couple of booths, I might get something from Regal Eagle, because they have some really good stuff there, just like a side or something, to keep me going until dinner. And just to show you the kind of crowds today, as you can see, not too bad at all. Let's check out Italy. So they have beef, meatballs, and tomato sauce on a focaccia, and sweet sausage ragu and crispy applewood smoked bacon cavatelli. And I'm gonna bypass the Italy pavilion just for now. I will be back later, of course, to eat dinner and we'll take a look at the pavilion a bit closer then. 
So for now I'm just going to walk on by straight to America. Yeah, I think I'm going to check out Regal Eagle and get something here. If I leave it too much longer then it'll be too close to dinner. I'm now seated in Regal Eagle and this is the kind of theming in here. It is quite loud in here but it's very busy because it's kind of around lunchtime. And I was going to get a mac and cheese and I ended up getting the kids meal. This is a kids mac and cheese and you could get it with two sides. So I had coleslaw and fries and it came with this water and the total cost for this was $7.44 including tax. So bearing in mind that some of the items in the Food and Wine Festival Festival, just the small little items that you get cost more than that just for one thing so I actually think this is amazing value and this is just a perfect size for a small lunch while I'm here I just thought I would show you what the wait times are because that's always interesting and gives you an indication of kind of how busy it is what kind of day it is so Spaceship Earth is a five minute wait so that's really good Turtle Crush is 15 minutes, 25 minutes over there for Soarin'. Test Track is 50, that's always a little bit higher but you can use a single rider. 80 minutes for Frozen, that's not uncommon. I think 20 minutes there is for the meet and greets, yes, that's right. Let's see what Ratatouille is, 35, that's really not that bad, 35 minutes. So on the whole I would say that's a fairly average day for Epcot, like 50 and 80 minutes for Frozen, um, that's fairly standard. But Ratatouille, I would say that's lower than normal. That was a perfect little lunch stop and now I'm going to press on. I might just go and check out the art store over here on the left because I haven't been in there for the last, I don't think the last couple of trips. So we'll see if they've got anything new. It is honestly so beautiful in the World Showcase today. It always is, but I love this so much. This park will forever be my favourite. Many years ago, this actually used to be at the main entrance of the park. I love this picture, this is amazing. And this box, you can actually buy this. I saw it in the Germany pavilion and it has a poison apple Christmas ornament inside. You might remember it from mine and Catherine's trip. We saw it in the Magic Kingdom. I honestly just love all of the artwork in here. I could have all of this artwork at home if I had enough wall space for it. I love this Encanto one, that's so nice. If you are a Disney art fan, I would highly recommend trying to come and visit during the Festival of the Arts. So that's January and February, I think. And uh, Catherine and I loved it when we were here earlier this year. And you get to see so much more artwork. This is just one store. They have different um, artwork all the way around the World Showcase during the festival. This one is very cool at the bottom. That Encanto one is so nice. And if you're ever looking for merchandise in this pavilion, it's just this little kiosk out here other than the art store, of course. And during Food and Wine Festival, they have the Eat to the Beat concert series. And if you get the little festival passport, there will be a full list in there of all of the concerts throughout the festival. I remember once many years ago, we were here for um, the Eat to the Beat concerts and they had Hanson here. They didn't do Mbop and everybody was very upset. I was quite disappointed myself, I can't lie. Just here, if you've never tried the shaved ice, I would highly recommend that on a hot day. I've never tried it for years and I had it recently and loved it. I can't get over how quiet it seems today. I mean, there's a lot of people around, but this is very, very nice for the World Showcase. It can be a lot more crowded than this at times. And I think we need to head into the Mitsukoshi department store, of course. We have Gudetama, the lazy egg. He's actually in a burger. I don't think I've seen either of these before. He has a chili there and he's a little bit overheated from eating the chilli by the look of it and also this guy with the headphones and sunglasses and I feel like the stock situation has definitely improved in this pavilion after Covid they didn't have a lot of stuff especially back here where they have all of the candy and snacks and stuff it was all very bare but they now do have quite a lot of stuff here again they actually have peach cream frappe candy you don't often see candy that is actually the flavour of frappes Maybe peach cream frappe is a big thing in Japan, I don't know. Let me know if anybody knows. Oh, they have these little candy sets. I think this is where you make what looks like regular food, but it's all made out of candy. And you kind of make it, I think. I have a feeling that's what this is. Yes, it is. I've seen these on um, Instagram and TikTok, people actually making these up to look like this meal, basically. Oh my gosh, these are my favorite candy. They haven't had these for ages. They used to be hanging up but now they're here, I'm gonna get some of these. I'm just here in the little kawaii exhibition in the Japan Pavilion. I actually just needed to take a seat for two seconds to sort through my bag. And I have to say, this is one of the best places in the entire World Showcase for air conditioning. If you are feeling the heat, if you're here during a very hot time and it's the middle of the day or something, as you will see, there's a lot of people in here just taking a seat 
because it does have very, very powerful air conditioning. It's nice and cool in here. And while we're here, let's see what they have at the Japan booth for the Food and Wine Festival. Here they have a teriyaki chicken bun with chicken vegetables and teriyaki sauce, a fire taiko roll, and beef wagyu don. Traditional Japanese rice bowl with American wagyu beef over steamed white rice. I would imagine that's quite popular. And they have one of the little festival markets up ahead, so I'm just gonna see if they have a food and wine festival pin. They have this one here, which is not my favorite, I have to say. I like that one a little better. I might see whether they've got an annual pass holder one at the World Traveler Shop at the International Gateway exit, because they sometimes have them there. I do really like this though. This is a set of six coasters that look like a burger. And here at the Grease booth, we have Spanakopita, griddle cheese with pistachios and honey. I've always been meaning to try that, but I've never tried it. They've had that for a few years, I think. They have a lamb, do you say it gyro, gyro? Gyro, I don't know, however you say that. And um, plant-based impossible moussaka. I know you guys love it really. It wouldn't be a trip to Disney without my complete inability to pronounce anything correctly. And we have to just check out whether the air conditioning in here is as good as ever, because I like to show you guys the best spots if you are looking for a rest. Although it's not peaceful because of this car thing in here. But in answer to the question, yes, it is very cool in here. So still a good place to take a break. So I'm just taking a little break here in Fed's house in Morocco. This is a really nice place to sit actually. Although it's still kind of open air, you are in the shade and there's a couple of little benches by the fountain here. It's one of my favorite places to take a break. So once I've had five more minutes, I am going to head over then to the France Pavilion, which is one of my favorites. I do love that pavilion. Depending what the wait time is for Ratatouille, I may or may not ride it, but I am coming back later in the trip. So today's more been about wandering the world showcase than riding the ride, so we'll see. And uh, then it's probably gonna be time to start making my way slowly back towards Italy for dinner at Via Napoli, which I can't wait for. I love Via Napoli so much. The pizza there is just the best. A lot of people have asked whether I prefer Via Napoli or Blaze pizza. I find it hard to compare the two because they're completely different types of pizza, I would say. The pizza at Via Napoli is much more like traditional kind of, I guess. Um, I love both. I do love both. Don't ask me to choose, I can't choose. Okay, I'm on the move again, and I just spoke to Becky on FaceTime back there. And a question I get a lot from you guys is, do I feel lonely when I'm on solo trips? I really don't, because I speak to people back home every day, my mum and my friends. All of them have been to Disney before, so they quite often want to see on FaceTime, like, where are you, what are you doing? And I speak to people loads, and also I meet you guys in the parks all the time. So I really never, ever feel lonely on a solo trip, in honesty. And we're now heading into the France Pavilion, and I did eat at Le Chefs de France recently I hadn't done it for years and then I did go and do it a couple of trips ago I forget exactly when I will link that vlog below in case you're interested in seeing that and I did really enjoy the food here I will say it was kind of pricey though compared to a lot of the other meals that I'd done that trip it did cost quite a lot so just bear that in mind and I just looked on the app and it said that the wait time for Ratatouille was 35 minutes but it is in fact 55 looking at the sign on here so I think I'll give that a miss for now I did that just on my last trip it was the last thing we did actually before we came home and I'm just in the store opposite the perfume shop and this is where you can get these lavender ears I've seen a few people wearing these today oh there's always a line for this place and there isn't today only a very small one inside but I cannot eat ice cream right now because it will spoil my meal later very tempting though and they do have this France pavilion ornament so it's the little bit that we just walked past out there so this is where the um, Impressions de France show or the sing-along um, either way it is and then on the back you have Mickey and Minnie and the Eiffel Tower so if you're a France pavilion fan that is a really nice souvenir I do need a drink actually and since there's not a huge line in the ice cream place maybe I'll just get one in there I'm assuming they have some drinks in here I'm not sure what they have Okay, verdict on that, they only sell bottles of water in there, so if you want anything else to drink, the ice cream place is not the one. So I'm gonna go back in here to Belandry Patisserie and grab a drink here. While we're here, I can show you guys these amazing cakes and pastries and things they have. That strawberry tart is one of my favorite things. They have an eclair, really, really nice stuff in here. I have my drink and I ended up going for a rosé. I was not in the market for an alcoholic drink actually, but I just kind of panic ordered it at the last minute. It looked really good, somebody else was getting one. And it's rosé, peach and 
something else I've already forgotten. I will put it on the screen. It's actually really, really nice. Um, but it's my second alcoholic drink of the day. <laughs> that drink was really good, actually. I've not had that before. I've had the, um, what's the other one called? The Grey Goose Vodka Slushy thing, but I've not had that Frosé, I don't think. It's really nice, anyway. And um, I met some more of you guys in there. I really can't believe how many of you I've met today. It's been amazing. And I've just heard from Kate. She's actually got her days mixed up. So she thought this evening was Grand Floridian Cafe for dinner, and that's actually tomorrow night. So they are gonna meet me tomorrow night for dinner at the Grand Floridian, and tonight it will just be me at Viennapolis so you'll see Kate tomorrow um, which will be in the next vlog which will be next week for you guys so I'm gonna make a slow walk back towards Italy and when I get there I'll probably just ask if I can check in a little bit early or if they can maybe fit me in a bit early and just to show you what they have here at the Brazil booth for the food and wine festival feijoada which is black beans with pork belly Brazil nut pesto and rice and then they have a Brazilian cheese bread well, I've just spotted here the full eat to the beat lineup so let's see who they have so we're already in September. I'm trying to see if I recognize any of them. 98 degrees, I recognize them. Boys to men. Latin Ambition, um, we saw last time. They were really, really good. Then they have Sugar Ray, Air Supply in October, 15th, 16th. Billy Ocean, 22nd to the 23rd. And they do have Hanson, October 27th to the 30th. And Big Bad Voodoo Daddy in November, 10th to the 11th. And here at the Flavors of America booth, they have an Italian hot beef sandwich, Chiapino, Chiapino, which is seafood stew with saffron infused tomato fennel broth. I actually smelled that as I was walking past, it was very fishy. I, I'm not even gonna attempt to pronounce that. Corn tortilla chips, tossed in salsa verde with ranchero chicken, queso fresco, cilantro lime crema, and a soft poached egg. And they also have a carrot cake. And we've got a concert starting. They actually sound really good. And this is a new Italy range that they have. So it has pizza, cannoli, gelato, and they have these ears as well. Well, that's cute. It's kind of got a side bow, and they still have the lemon ears and this lemon shirt as well. The donkey is still here with his cart, although they have put these flowers around. I'm wondering if that's because people might try and climb onto him. I do have a feeling people may potentially try and do that. Not a lot of people, but some people. And it's just getting to my favorite time of the day in Epcot when it's starting to get to the evening, the sun is going down. This is not quite it yet, it's not golden hour yet, but the sun's gone down a little bit, so it's just not quite as warm. And I will actually be going to Tutto Italia later in the trip, so I've never shown that in the vlogs ever, I don't think. So that'll be a new one to show you. And of course, Via Napoli is my destination. I'm a little bit early, I'm gonna ask if I can go in any earlier. It might be a no, but let's see. Okay, we have success. I'm actually just under an hour early and they've said they can seat me. Look at this chandelier. That is very, very awesome. I love the colors. I'm already seated. They took me straight in, which is perfect because then I can get away a little bit earlier and head back for some rest because I'm feeling the pace now. And I'm right by this window, which is nice. So I can see out to the rest of the pavilion. And they do have the QR code for the touchless menu, but she has actually brought me a regular menu. So let's see what drink I'm gonna have. <coughs> alcoholic after my frosé. I really like the aqua fresca that they have here and they have a strawberry one. And in terms of pizza, obviously I'm getting pizza. They do have some salads and some pasta dishes here if you're not a fan of pizza and they do have a few appetizers there. But pizza is the one you have to get pizza here. It is so amazing. So they do a 10 inch individual. They do a 20 inch large, which serves two to three. If I'm here with Becky or Kate or whoever, we will always share the large one. And they also have a half meter mezzo metro, which serves three to four. So I will obviously be getting the individual today. It's just deciding what toppings I'm gonna have. I have some water here and I also went for the strawberry aqua fresca. This is really nice. It's just like a, kind of like a strawberry lemonade, but I would say it's not quite as sweet. It tastes kind of like a more watered down version of strawberry lemonade but just be aware that it's not very sweet and it's not very strong compared to the regular ones you get elsewhere. Okay, my pizza has arrived and I went for mushroom and prosciutto. I must admit, I did not think there would be quite this much 
prosciutto. I could have done with just a couple of tiny little bits, so I don't know if I'll be able to eat all of that. Um, I might have to leave some of it on the side because that is loads, but it smells delicious, always is. I've never ever had a bad pizza here, it's always been so good. Oh my goodness, I am done. I had to leave a lot of the prosciutto, there was just so much of it. But honestly, the pizza here, always 10 out of 10, absolutely love it. I'm not going to be getting dessert, but I just wanted to show you what they have. So they have a tiramisu, a cannoli, a fresh berry cheesecake, cream cheese and ricotta cheese cake with a blackberry compote, tortadella nonna, which is a grandmother cake, cream, cannoli and almond, and also gelato. And just to show you the main restaurant as I'm walking out, it's huge actually. It can get quite noisy in here, I wouldn't recommend it for like a date night spot. It can be quite loud, but it's really, really good food. And it is now time to head out. So I'm very full of pizza <laughs> and very tired from my first day. Okay, let's go and see if we can hunt down this pin. Might as well just have a little browse while we're here. They still have the Mr. Toad mug and they have this hoodie that I like and they do have more sizes in here. I can't decide whether I want it or not. And there's a couple of items here that I haven't seen before. They have these Daisy Duck ears. These are really different. And I've never seen this spirit jersey before. So it has Walt Disney World. I'm not sure that this is actually a spirit jersey. I don't think it is. No, it's not. It's just a sweatshirt, so it's not a spirit jersey branded item. That's $64.99. And I'm sure I will get a little trip on the Skyliner at some point. Probably when I do a resort hopping day. I'm going to do that later in the trip. And I just need to show you guys this view across to the boardwalk and the swan and dolphin over there. And then the yacht club with his incredible sunset. I'm now at the beach club and I'm sat in my Uber calling chair. Yes, I do always sit in the same chair to call my Ubers. I am very sad like that. And um, I've had such an amazing day today. I honestly have, I'm so tired now. I think because travel day was yesterday, it just kind of hits you. So I'm looking forward to getting back and what I really, really need is a nice cup of tea. If you're British, you'll know what I'm saying with that because you just have to have a nice cup of tea. And specifically my Yorkshire tea biscuit brew, which I did bring with me this time. I remembered the tea bags. So I'm gonna get myself some milk when I get back to the resort and have a nice cup of tea, which I can't wait for. I am back and if I look happy, it is because I've got my cup of tea in my mug. I got these mugs in Target and the kettle that I have that lives in the owner's locker is, I don't know, like eight years old or something. It is just still surviving. I love being able to make my cups of tea while I'm away. I've got my pajamas on now. I am very, very tired. Now, I suddenly, when I got to, I think it was like on the way to Via Napoli, I just hit a wall, you know, when that kind of happens. And I was like, oh my gosh, I'm exhausted. <laughs> but what an incredible day today was. It felt like just one of those perfect Disney days today. I didn't do loads of attractions, as you know, I just did, I think, Spaceship Earth and Grand Fiesta Tour, that was probably it. But Wandering the World Showcase is my favorite thing to do. I met so many of you guys today. I honestly can't believe how many of you were in Epcot. So a huge thank you to everyone who came over to say hello. I really do love talking to you, love hearing about your trips, your plans, what's going on. And all of you are always just so lovely. And um, just for those who might want the detail, the Uber coming home was a little more expensive at $20, I think it was. I'm sure it's 17 this morning and 20 going back. But what an amazing first day, absolutely loved it. Tomorrow is gonna to be the Magic Kingdom. I usually do Magic Kingdom first, but I thought I would change it up this time and do Epcot. So Magic Kingdom is gonna to be tomorrow. I'm gonna to be seeing Kate tomorrow evening, eating at the Grand Floridian Cafe and just having some good Magic Kingdom time. I can't wait to get back to that park. When you walk into the Magic Kingdom, there really just is nothing like it. There is no feeling like it. That is your kind of, I'm at Disney moment. So I'm really excited to take you guys along. I really hope you've enjoyed this first vlog, the travel day and day one combined. If you have enjoyed this, please do give it a thumbs up. That helps other people to find it if they're looking for Disney vlogs. And as always, a huge thank you to you guys for taking the time out of your day to watch this vlog. I really do appreciate it so much. And all of your likes, comments, subscribing, supporting over on Patreon, Instagram, everything that you do, just a huge thank you to all of you. And uh, I'm excited to share the rest of this trip with you. There's gonna be lots more vlogs to come, the Halloween party, different restaurants, lots of stuff. So please do subscribe if you haven't already. Thank you again for watching. I hope you guys are having a great day and I'll see you in the next one. Bye. And I 
show you the parade in a second, but look at the castle. Close up, absolutely love this view. 